Wow, the legendary collection openings happened yesterday, and what are my thoughts on everything that we witnessed? Alright, don't be like the 30% of you that have not smashed the elephant crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so you guys don't miss out more Oz content. So, we had openings for the Legendary Collection 25th Anniversary. And the same generic thing that I've been hearing from a lot of people is, This, gar this is absolute garbage. I can't believe this. Here's the thing, alright? You know, competitive players aren't the only players that actually run the game here. There are a lot of players that have been wanting to open old school product since, you know, COVID came through and did its thing. I hate to tell you this, but once again, this is not a product that is designed for the competitive player base. This is for the actual duelist that wants to collect product and enjoy it. I don't know how many times I have to yell that to the top of my freaking lungs, you know, to make sure that you understand this. Alright, Yu-Gi-Oh! is always going to be a game that is going to have way more casual players. Who cares if they don't go to your LGS? Who, who cares? They're always going to exist in more numbers than you could ever actually imagine. So, what we got out of this set yesterday, we'll have a little Jinzo up here so you can kind of have an idea of what we're looking at here, because the Jinzo has been the biggest comparison as of late in terms of what we're expecting here. I mean, uh, you got an upgraded text box, which is actually fantastic. You got upgraded card text, which is actually very, very important here. I actually have, from the last time that this set was out, I don't know if you guys know this, but before this, um, we had uh, stuff already updated. There were, um, I, I think it's a Dimension Fusion. I have one of the newer ones that's from the last time that this happened, but it's all just generically upgraded cards from the era with new text box. And of course, you do see that the attribute and the stars are hollow. Cool. I mean, that's fine. Um, I feel like the biggest thing here, uh, besides the, oh, this is a repackage, okay? Konami has to, Konami has to reprint product to, you know, keep things in circulation so that players don't have to go on, you know, Amazon, eBay, you know, all of these other places here to spend outlandish amounts of money to get their nostalgia fix. Sorry to tell you that. I, I seem, me and like a few other people seem to be the only ones. I actually have a friend that runs a store. Um, one of the things that they were talking about was the amount of people that actually come in looking for like some of these older sets just to kind of open up and have a good time or, you know, to have fun with the family, you know. You would be really surprised. It's the same thing. Like, we gave the Egyptian God Reloaded Structure Decks that are coming out here uh, in a little bit of time. Gave them a little bit of crap, but you got to understand, if, you know, a casual player walks into your LGS and you want to, they, they want some of these Structure Decks, like, hey, you have, I saw Yu-Gi-Oh!, you know, I was watching a random stream or something, or, you know, it popped up on TV, and, you know, I really like that Egyptian god. Do you, do you have any way that I could, you know, get something that's kind of playable, you know, kind of open up and have some fun with, you know, maybe like my cousin or something kind of plays the game? You have a lot of things that you need to consider here with that. So, honestly, little Timmy comes into the LGS, wants a product. I mean, you might not ever see them again. But you know what? You made that sale. You made that person happy. And once again, a rehashed or a repackaged product like this is going to make those players happy. Now, for the competitive players, yeah, cool. We got updated card frames. Oh, that's actually, I'm actually kind of happy about that. Um, it's actually kind of nice. And you have all the infinite versions of the cards out here in terms of what they are. You can pick these up and play them, sure, but if you want something more like Modern Era, still maintaining, you know, like the previous versions of these, yeah, you can get these. The frames are updated. They did a fantastic job with the updates for this stuff. Now, one big thing that I do want to point out here is evidently not everything has problem-solving card text at this point in time. You might not know this, but there are some cards in these sets that have not been reprinted in 15 plus years. And what's actually very interesting was they didn't actually take time to kind of update all of the cards. So what, what it kind of feels like here was they accessed everything that Konami initially had on hand here. And they were like, you know, we can't really, 
we can't really rewrite all of the cards that are in here because there's not really much of a an application or a reason to update everything in here, especially some of the bad cards. I get that. I, I'm not gonna. It, it would be nice if they would do a complete overhaul and bring everything up to speed. But once again, I understand the feel that I guess that can be a little bit lazy. But as long as everything is like playable, that needs it, that's good. So yeah, cards that uh, 15 plus years old that uh, don't initially have text updates, you're going to be uh, you're gonna be you're gonna be reading Jinzo and you're like, wow, this this is worded very differently. And then you over here you're reading I don't know some like old lob card and you're like, what in the world is it? What is this? And like, well. It doesn't have PSCT at this point, but overall, I mean, all the foiling updates with the stars and the overall attribute, absolute banger. I like that. I like that a lot. Konami did, Konami did a very good job with that. Wait, what about Chaos Emperor Dragon? Chaos Emperor Dragon has the red. I have not seen, as of filming this video, I'm sure that'll change, all right, before somebody's like, Robbie, you missed it. Cards that like Painful Choice, another good example. Hey, actually, has Painful Choice had its PSET yet? That's going to be an interesting one to see, actually. I, once again, I'm happy to see that they're doing this. I, I do just want to see what some of the new, like, versions look like. The Chaos Ember Dragon Arata is going to be an interesting one to kind of see with the update. I mean, I think the last version we had was the Jump version. Man, that was years ago. Yeah, you guys remember Shonen Jump subscription cards, right? Where you had these cards that Konami generically was like, Hey, well, here's your text update. Here's your uh, here's your Jump promo for the quarter. Uh, call it a day. And uh, that, was, that was it. That was the extent of that. <laughs> so, yeah, to see an updated Chaos Emperor Dragon out of this, you know, with the updated foiling, with the updated attributes and stars... And with the text, ooh, I, I'm actually kind of excited about that. Is there a reason for the competitive player to buy this product? Uh, nostalgia, honestly. Um, I'm not going to slam this product as hard as I've seen other people because I understand from the store standpoint that stores want product like this. They want a chance to draw players in, and they want a chance to create the LGS experience. This game is not strictly, no matter, no matter how much... You know, you believe that, you know, the competitive players, the one to buy, competitive players don't buy a product. They're over here sitting on their horse or like, buy singles, right? They're not the ones that are out here eating up the infinite volume of product. No, that's not the thing. It's the casual player. No matter how much you, how much your locals might have told you that, well, you know, we only sell it to the competitive. It's not the same in every region. I, I try to make people realize that, you know, you're you're not the you're you might be the main character in your story, but you're not the main character in the rest of the universe. You are just one little piece in the overall moving machine, cog in the machine, as they would call it. You're just one little nut and bolt in the universal world out there. And if you think that you not buying this product is going to make that much of a difference, no. Somebody else will come through. Somebody else will be genuinely interested in it. You can slam the product all you want, but once again, it's not designed towards the competitive player base. It's designed for the player that has not really had the chance to play the game. Maybe he's bought a pack or two, and they see the Egyptian gods, and they're like, holy crap, that is really cool. You know, maybe, maybe the little duelist that goes to school that can barely afford anything finally has saved up something for something to treat themselves after a year or two. And this is the product that they want to get. All right. Or, you know, just go buy singles for it. If you want the nice looking Egyptian gods, stuff like that. I heard pre-sales are like, what, 10, 12 bucks on stuff. It's not going to break the bank. Overall, looks good to me. So what other, uh, you, do, you do know that we do have the, end of, or the, the boxes of this set coming. A lot of people are hoping that they're going to sprinkle in some, some uh, quarter century secret rares in there. I don't know. Uh, it would be actually very interesting to see that, um, and that they didn't do it in this set, but they could actually do it in the upcoming Rewave boxes. But uh, I, I think I'm hoping just a little bit too much there. But imagine, quarter century secret rares in the actual boxes, but not in here. Mm, that would be, it'd be the biggest tease of all time. So what do you guys think? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. Uh.
Ball. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.